On September 26, 2001, North Star was officially launched. We had no budget, no staff, and no funding, but we had bylaws and a lot of passion, said Don Feeney. We stressed the importance of having everyone together at the table with an equal voice, remarked Lance Holthusen, giving rise to the name North Star Problem Gambling Alliance. It wouldn't be until 2005 that the legislature approved funding. This enabled the helpline to be established. For years, Roger Svensson answered the calls on his own, 24-7, seven days a week, whenever anyone called. brings together people from diverse backgrounds and uses their collective voice to amplify the voices and needs of people who aren't always heard. I think North Star has had the most impact with treatment providers, really providing a place for us to learn about problem gambling as far as best practices for treating gamblers, the latest research that's involved, while at the same time creating places for us to connect as providers. You know, it's good to know some of the best practices, some of the industry standards that, that North Star provides and provides that awareness to regulators and, and my two racetracks. So I really hope that we can stay on the leading edge of this with new initiatives, uh, you know, proven, proven tactics to combat problem gambling and bring that help to our, our customers. Uh, we wanna make sure all of our customers are safe. I say in my presentations, if this is the only thing you remember from my presentation is go to North Star for resources if you need them for yourself or someone else. The Alliance keeps us in touch with the fact that there are people who do need help dealing with gambling. When I first sought out treatment uh, 10 years ago, I had no idea where to go. So I just Googled, you know, problem gambling or gambling addiction, Minnesota. Um, and I found the North Star site and then I got access to a counselor. And that was, you know, critical for me. The visibility for this particular population is the most critical of all because they're so hidden and they're so far in the closet. How do we make that connection and how do we make this a, a meaningful experience for those persons seeking help? Another issue of getting the, the rest of the substance use disorder community more in tune with that gambling disorder is often a co-occurring issue with persons with substance use disorder. So it's making sure that those other providers are screening, asking the right questions, and you know, when appropriate, making a referral that ability to um, build the public perception and, and shift the public perception to this is an issue that requires resources, um, that requires outreach and education. I think that's a really big challenge. Accessibility and taking away the social aspect of gaming is um, potentially really harmful. Uh, we need to really start to focus on how do we bring these gamblers out into the open to get help? because we know there is way more problem out there than people getting help. We see kids uh, taking to online gambling and uh, gambling through their smartphones. And so that's a concern that uh, we need to, to focus on. I'm excited about um, partnering more with and getting more uh, feedback from and getting more attention to the operators and not only getting their input, but being able to provide something to them. Uh, we're talking a lot about standardization of problem gambling curriculum and training. We're talking about how we can work together. Greatest grounds for hope is that we understand so much more about the disorder. We've gone through a lot of metamorphoses, but at the end of the day, we've come out very strong and, as I said, very professional and really, I think, well positioned to move forward. After today, we will bear a new name and logo that reclaims our central identity as Minnesotans. We think it better speaks to our goals of building coalitions. From today forward, we will be known as the Minnesota Alliance on Problem Gambling. 
When I interviewed Don Feeney, a North Star co-founder, he remarked how important it was to retain the word alliance. He said, from the very first day, it had to be a coalition of all parties with interest, not just a group of providers or people in recovery. All the voices need to be brought together and heard collectively. This was a major accomplishment. You have to realize this was not the model for state councils at the time. We had a lot to do with setting the tone for the other states. We honor that decision by retaining alliance in our name and will continue to invite all to the table who wish to engage in our meaningful and challenging mission. Here's to the next decade of service.